it was a group of cops side na lori and all that it was a whole group of cops and waliza madam ni nini madam ni nini i'm like niko na wagonjwa pale niko na madaktari wanajaribu kusaidiana and we had a doc alikuwa amepasuliwa hapa na kanista so tuko huko na mwambia niko na wagonjwa huko niko na madaktari nini nini he's like madam ah ni point ya rungu madam we rudi huko tuna, na tunaua wengine wengi utaletewa huko rudi huko and i was so taken aback i was like wait 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 wait, wait. mimi ni mimi nimesikia ama hadi nikamuuliza eti utaua wengine wengi na akarudia eh rudi huko ngoje ngoje tuna unaletewa huko niko na wagonjwa wa watu wa gunshots kuliko kumi na askari wenzenu enda kumbia tutaua wengine wengi enda chukua wengine What's up everybody? This is Kenya Online Media, your number one source of entertainment news. My good name is Eve Nyaga and my guest today is a lady who has gone viral for a very courageous moment that she had, you know, during the protest. And I don't want to introduce her sana, I just want her to speak for herself because we're the courage. She goes by the name Zaha. So we will be talking about, you know, her experience um, during the protest, what she experienced as a medic, as a volunteer, you know, um, on the medical side during the protest. Zaha, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Welcome to Kenya Online Media. Thank you for having me and thank you for giving life to these discussions. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe just introduce yourself to the people watching at home. Well, I am Zaha Ndimuli. I am a human rights defender. Um, I serve at Amali organization as the executive director. And on the protest, um, we were just there, of course, on humanitarian capacity until on that Occupy Parliament Day when I decided to join uh, in solidarity with the medical team to support the injured. And I think that's when that entire thing happened for me. Otherwise, really, <laughs> I just do my work on the side <laughs> without... Being on the limelight. Yeah. 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 Well, I w often... Often than not, you'll find once in a while we're on the spotlight, mm -hmm. but for just justice work, because most of the time we focus on social injustices, climate justice, mm -hmm. um, and also a lot of work around inclusive youth development, which is why for us the yeah. civic education and participating mm -hmm. in the protest became important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, during the Occupy Parliament protest, that is when that video of you went viral. So maybe lead us to the events that made you walk up to that cop. Okay. Um, so we had just, we, I think I remember when I got to town on that day, I was stuck at City Hall Avenue. Mm -hmm. The crowd was just right directly opposite. So when I got there, um, automatically because that day I knew I wanted to support the medical team I was trying to figure out where the medical persons are mm -hmm. and in between that uh, one cop mm -hmm. got a canister at him and the smoke just went at him very very aggressively and he was losing consciousness mm -hmm. so by the time one of his colleagues Alikwanam later Nika notice na mhandle vibaya vitu kama hizo and you know so for the hakuna kubaguana yeah. when it comes to such an event mm -hmm. where an injured person is an injured person mm -hmm. so i rushed there i'm like the medical team is not kwenye unampeleka iko huko tuna jaribu kusaidia kumpeleka this guy just blatantly shouts at me it's like chana ya songa and i'm like my friend mm -hmm. tunamsaidia and na una una unanotisi mtu juko alikuwa anaenda ni kama ana anazimia mm -hmm. Tumambi una mhandle vibaya and you can cause harm to him. Ndo nika summon, nika signal the rest of the medical team. Waka mchukua. Then we took him uko kwa medical tent. Aka saidiwa, aka kwa poa. I don't know what happened to him after. But then now sasa jioni. Jioni when people occupied parliament mm -hmm. intensively that's when the attacks from the police I think went very aggressively. Tulikuwa isa it's sasa ya parking lot ya Holy Family Basilica. Um, we had so many 
injured people mm. when walikuwa wanaletwa mm. and then the medical tent was open so by the time unapata kuna madoki kuna first aiders kuna nurses every single aspect of health persons were there so we are trying to bring injured people to kitu wengine to get after ambulance and all that in between that kanista ikatupoa and i'm like do these guys know tuko na medics hapa so, ndani ya holy family ndani ya holy family basilica imagine and you see we had very young pro, young young people who are uh-huh. protesters when you walikuwa six souls bado kwa church mm-hmm. so when they came to holy family basilica most of them were seated just mm-hmm. waiting for things to calm down yeah. So when they threw the first canister and kasema acha tu ni assume by the way you ni bad 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 throw you know mm-hmm. unfortunately kasema hata labda maybe ni jua meona tu megather wakafikiria maybe ni wase mm-hmm. but then i had live bullets and i was like no 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 this guys can't be serious on a shoot kwa medical kwa medical tent tulikuwa tena watu wa meo they knew there, there was a they medical knew. tent there and it was very on speakers ilikuwa hapo kwa parking lot mm. so hawezi sema huoni kitu imeandikwa red cross yeah. huoni wase wamevaa lab coats huoni mm. na walikuwa wameona tukiingiza hiyo ofisa hapo mm. kuna ofisi alikuwa ameumia vibaya sana mkono so tu, wali wali tuona tukimuingiza ndani mm. So in my head I was like me I'm sure they have seen us and I am sure they know that this is a medical tent here. Why would you open live fire? Now already we had injured people. Kukaka kanista zingine mbili. I was like ndani tena. Yes. I was like no way this is happening. So smoky meja you can't even see the injured, you can't see the doctors, everybody is running. Can you imagine the stampede that was there? I think my heart just broke. Nikasema tu cheki at the end of the day kama because most of the time wana rushanga kanista yo smoky kija they shoot. Mm-hmm. So you don't see who exactly you're shooting. So I knew kwenyata naenda Mungu wangu kumeja smoke. Neza wawa. Anything can happen. But there's a kid here who requires ambulance. There are so many other injured people. There were children. There were children. Watoto kulikuwa protesters. Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. I well, I wish I can get anyone who was there. Mm-hmm. We had kids na uniform, wengine wadogo. Kuna mwenye tulipata leo kadinilotunga tukamuuliza, "Wewe unafaindi kwa mama?" Akaniambia, "Mama wangu alikufa na nini? Ana cancer na wanataka kukasa, wanataka kutax cancer." No mtoto you can tell. That's like a primary school child. But they were there. Na vile walishika na msongamano. Of course, church is the best place for those kids to reside in until things calm down. And that is exactly where they were hurt. So mimi nilisikia tu gunshots zinatokea hii side nikajiambia tu Mungu wangu ni ponye lakini they have to I have to go tell them to stop because there's nothing else we could do there. And you can imagine tear gas is very toxic. So by the time it's going on on open wounds, by the time we're having a lot of inflammables that happen to be, you know, um you know just alternatives for medics to use and all that mm-hmm. they can blow up mm-hmm. they can blow up it's like an yeah. even bigger disaster yes, an even bigger disaster and then i'm looking at they were not just throwing the canisters that have smoke they were throwing ex- the two explosives so i'm like eh kuna nyeli lipuke i think that video niliona vizuri sana kuna somebody i think i think it's citizen kuna nyeli lipuke hapo like with, with the fire and all that so me i just decided uh how much to them i will ahead i did my salah and i walked through that smoke still listening to gunshots i had my nilitoa hijab yangu i thought i think nilipotelelea nilipotea nilipoteza hapo kwa njia i managed to get to the gate na nikatoka nje me i went straight for the cops and i was like excuse unajua niko na madaktari hapo jamani na tuko na wagonjwa and importantly niko na hadi maafisa we na tunatibu na watu wa bagui mm. why would you find the where would you find the courage to tear gas and to shoot at a medical tent and this guy did us wakiwa wote cause it was every, it was a group of cops kama wangapi i can't remember It was a group of cops kujuko diku liko na wengine hiyo side na lorry and all that was a whole group of cops and waliza madam ni nini madam ni nini i'm like niko na wagonjwa pale niko na madaktari wanajaribu kusaidiana and we had a doc aliko mepasuliwa hapa na kanista so tuko huko na mwambia niko na wagonjwa huko niko na madaktari nini nini he's like madam ah ni point ya rungu madam We rudi huko tuna, na tunaua wengine wengi utaletewa huko rudi huko and I was so taken aback I was like wait 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 wait, wait. mimi ni mimi nimesikia ama hadi nikamuuliza atiutaua wengine wengi 
na akarudia e rudi huko ngoje ngoje tuna unaletewa huko and even this there's a kaka kopo was over here akaambia madam nimesikia rudi nimesikia nimesikia tunafika kwa tent they tear gas dust again before you even get to the tent so when that cop told you that like when you walikuwa na yeye kuna mwenye alimwambia you know don't say that like there was no remorse there was no remorse i saw mimi i saw cold people there the only guy who told me yani cuz aliangalia di mwanzake ali ali ile eh bro unasema nini and i think i hako ameona kama kuna camera hata mimi sikwa nimeona there was a camera guy alhamdulillah he took a, he took a picture of it and it really explained to people what police brutality is but ni huyo tu mse mmoja alisema tu madam nimesikia we rudi the rest ilikuwa kunishautia nitoke hapo they were like we rudi nasi umwambia aende ama wewe unataka tuanze na wewe i'm like he umuna yani i was just like do this guys know can you wanna sema ama nini i'm like endo kusaidiane huko wewe mwenye sasa vile wewe mwenye aliniambia sijui eti ye rudi madam ni msikia nilimwambia i am trying i am trying my best to help but nitasaidianaje kama mnarusha canister zuko ndani kama mnatushimu na tushut tukiwa huko ndani nitasai hakuna mtu anaweza fanya kazi yake hapo na tuko na injured people na mume block ambulance ipiti na ambulance yetu tunajaribu kuitisha it is due mp wanatoroka nazo na tuko na wagonjwa hapo i was running nuts I was running nuts and I could imagine what the doctors were going through over there. And then you see by the time people heard that MPs were going to want to flee na, na ambulances, people stoned ambulances. People were stoning down ambulances. Hadi unaambiwa shuka dere, fungua mlango to search. You know? So every ambulance that was going, it was very difficult for them to convince themselves to come back. You're going to be attacked. So the one ambulance imebaki and inajaribu ku find a way kurudi, ah watu wana block ambulance kuingia. And so you can imagine you're not only trying to find an ambulance for the injured you're also having police who really don't care mm -hmm. about where that ambulance is going or what it is trying to do na tuko na maskari yani it was also a shock niliwaambia niko na maskari mwenzao and it didn't it didn't move them like ni kama hata nilikuwa namsumbua like hata sijui wale ni shtua sana but they, there was no remorse nobody really because there were also police officers who were women there and none of them niliona kama but again hata siku bother mimi vile aliniambia hivyo nilijambia tu eh yenyewe we are alone here na nikajiambia tu za take heart kwa taturudi turudi kama uko una feel kama you know unaweza cause a certain reaction my priority was not that police officer my priority was the fact that the injured required help and them tear gassing the place was not making anything easier yeah. and i think also my priority was trying to ensure mm -hmm. that maybe for the first time mm -hmm. i just get my composure and take myself back mm -hmm. and start nilikuwa nimejambia nitacha tukatibu watu huko with the tear gas going on cuz watu wangekufia hapo alafu and you know I, but i felt very defeated because i was like these are the guys who are supposed to offer us protection what happens to us when the person giving us protection becomes a perpetrator na ndio mtu akwenda karija kukwambia rudi uko tunao wengine wengi ali affirm a lot of bullshit as in i, I was so shocked alafu nilikana nikajiuliza uni msia ko na watoto bibi kwa nyumba how sure are you what to kwa yuko kwa maandamano kama the other cop who he was killing fellas and then ended up you know have you know having the brother die die as well but it shocked me he was so stern eh na tunaua wengine wengi rudi huko i think that moment that moment when kenyan saw that video it broke their hearts like seriously and angered them but um speaking of um you as a medic on you know on the during the protest you know much later um, the president um went on the round table and he was asked about the young kid who was shot eight times and his response was <laughs> very heartbreaking as well i don't know maybe when you saw that when you saw his response being that ulikoka ground na uliona how things were what what did you feel i i remember that police and i remember I was the friend of mine tulili i think for 2 hours and 
I couldn't nilirudia hiyo part in, on YouTube nilirudi nyuma kama mara kama nne cuz the way the president even sat the boy is alive right this is a 12 year old kid unaambiwa akona eight bullets na uko na watoto you know me na nishangaza tu ama ama ama, ama ni situ na exaggerate parenthood haiwezi kuuma eh na eight bullets unafikiria mtu anaweza kuwa survivor na eight bullets because even after he was told the kid died there, there was no yani hakuna remorse kabisa and that is a trickle down effect that is also happening to the police they are affirmed of their violence they are affirmed of their of their of their character they are affirmed of their of their brutality so they don't care yeah and he is the chief of the what so what else can we expect from the from the normal police if the president also affirms the brutalities and you know even if you, you know you're not sure of the number of massacres that are happening the best thing the president would have done was to apologize for the parents who lost their children and to apologize for the young people for the brutality caused by the police mm -hmm. when you go ahead and feel the need to remind kenyans that you can compare them to buildings and the amount of cash that has been lost i think he should know he has lost the people really he has really lost everyone we are no longer there yeah um uh when you interacted with that police officer, you know that was a heavy moment. And it's not the only moment, Mali Tumeona, police officers being very, very brutal. You know, there are pictures of them who are, videos of them who are pictured, you know, throwing canisters live. And DCI has released a number of faces of the people who are pictured. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was waiting for the list of the cops I was really mm. waiting. Considering Kenyans did a lot of DCI work anyway, trying to put, put those faces on. Me, I was hoping, when I saw it, I was like, ah, probably the next one should be the one with also the cops and the politicians supporting goons. But, la haula. Same, same police. Mm. Ah, I think we are on our own. We are on our own. And I think that's why it's important for us to keep pushing that momentum on our own mm -hmm. and put solutions on our own and put these changes on our own. For as long as we are not violent, and I don't think Gen Zs are doing that, for as long as as Gen Zs we are accurately and strategically looking at change and telling ourselves, okay, this is what we want to see, this is how we want it to be done. And you see, at our owning, kasi watu wanakuambia tunataka hiyo ofisi yako tunakuambia tu kazi vile na kazi yako vile nafaa kuendelea na your accountability basis it should be the best time for him to embrace such intelligence but maybe DCI were many disappointed from the word go jodi walinishika tuesday and i remember na CDCI really when we were in central they tear gassed when we go because when we got there i got there with some lawyers from lsk the first time because i was following up on members of my organization who were also arrested for nothing mm -hmm. following up with that entire case they tear gassed us up off central together with the lawyers so you see there's a lot of you know we don't care we really don't care about your life and we really don't care about who you are and what you're about mm -hmm. and that says a lot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of tear gassing, you know, um, when the protests are going on, we see a lot of, you know, everything was peaceful, right? Until the moment when things went really south. And of late, during the last, I think, two protests, we've seen a lot of looting, a lot of goons. So I'm sure Kenyans usually wonder, like, so when people are protesting peacefully, there's a lot of tear gas. What happens when goons, you know, uh, are stealing and it's... The quick mat one is so evident, mm. Kwanza. The quick mat one just showcased to that police are actually part and parcel of the goons. Mm. Because quick mat was robbed and robbed and robbed and police were just there around Afia Center. Same, same to the people who came out with the rungus to protect their businesses. They're like, what wa kibiwa? The police are just there. But when peaceful protesters are gathering, that's when you tear gas. Like, such misplaced priorities, Aki Anani. Mm -hmm. Such misplaced priorities. And it has a lot to tell you who the police are serving. It's definitely not Mwananchi. Because Kama Saizi Tunambiwa, they were having some goons when you were on politicians, and you're seeing even the goons recording saying, Awajalipwa. Mm -hmm. So, it means the police are ready to, pro to protect goons and not protect the civilians. It is strange. Yani, it is so strange. It's shocking. Yeah. What kind of leadership do you think the young people, Gen Zs, uh, want for, you know, f for them, like for the people of Kenya? 
a leadership of truth. We associate our president with lies. We associate all politicians with lies. I don't think there's anything any politician aneza niambia. Even if sijai muona na any scandal, sidhani kuna kitu aneza niambia na niamini. I have lost all credible hope on all our politicians. But importantly, I feel like we have been failed as young people. And I'm so happy that we form 55% of the population. And I'm so happy that we have a chance to vote all these people out. I remember to recycle what we were going to do with from Sidri Lini to work in political powers. We were going to work with Mada, Wizi, Nini, embezzlement of funds. And we still trust them with political positions. This is exactly why we are here. I think it's just... We need a change from scratch, from MCAs to. Na in fact, size yata nanza kushukuzi nominated positions. Mutu kama Gloria or Waba Mrs. Takakumona tena in my life, genuinely speaking. It was such a fail. I walk around um, sexual reproductive health and rights, and I know how difficult it has been to end period poverty. So when you're seeing her passing a bill that, that wants to tax, or rather supporting a bill that wants to tax sanitary tiles and diapers, mm -hmm. I have looked at all, all of them very differently. Mm -hmm. So even these nominated positions, since right now, they are proving now more than ever to be useless. I think they should only have Crystal Lasiga in the Senate as a nominated senator. So a video of her saying, at he, nah, muka zijuna pata. I was so disappointed. And you see, that also has a lot to do with how they make women in power look like it's very useless for us to be given that opportunity. Often than not even after we plead and fight for us to be there. They're making it look like us getting into those positions is out of privilege and that's why we, we, it's like we're not able to do the work. Mm -hmm. And we have very few women leaders who we can actually account for good leadership, people like Akinamili. Mm -hmm. We're looking at very few and you know that's not supposed to be the case in a society where half the population is of young people. We should be having a lot of people we can look up to. Now, Kwai government, you can count less than 10 when you know the by the way, regardless who to at least I, I, really, I really appreciate their work. Mm -hmm. All of them have criminal records. It's scary. Yeah? When you're having cabinet secretaries who are in court for murder and they are seated there as cabinet secretaries, it's a shame. What God are they praying? I think I'm concerned. Ni kanisa gani wawa na amini? Ju ile kanisa nyemina jona ile mskiti mimi na jua. Mawaji ni the same, whether you're a politician or the same, wizi ni the same, embezzle, all this corruption is the same in every single plate of religion. So I don't know which God is that they, that affirms their murders, their corruption, their hatred and their tribalism. It's crazy. I don't know. I'm so disappointed. So do you think the movement, you know, um, do you think this movement has actually achieved exactly what you wanted to achieve? Fine. Um, leave alone even the, you know, um, we don't want the finance bill. Yeah. Has it achieved? Are leaders starting to be accountable? Because they're starting to change tune. Yeah. Which is very good. Um, I think it, yes, it has been more than a success. And why do I think so? It's because for the first time we're also seeing politicians who have humbled down to even say sorry. We also see politicians who have gone back home, who have never actually been in their constituency after they were voted for. We're also seeing a lot of um, people who are staunch, you know, in you know, voting the finance bill and you not not getting to the roots of Monanchi, actually sitting down to understand that Monanchi is not trying to take your job. Monanchi is reminding you of your job, and also even how the president has thrown everybody under the bus. Is is still a win? A win is a win. A win is a win. A win is a win because the president has blamed the correct people. Nurdin Haji should be checked, apparently. He, the DP should be checked, you know. And throwing all your friends, including the communications person, under the bus. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to say about even the mistrust that is happening in his own government. And so for us as, as, as Gen Z, I think it's just a matter of us looking at linear leadership cannot be the solution of the problem. And so even when they are forcing this thing, you can you guys structure yourselves... Really, nobody wants to form a political party because that is not their interest. Mm -hmm. Me, I want you to do your job so that I can have an easier life. Mm -hmm. I don't mind paying taxes for as long as there's cash flow in my hands. If there is money and I have employment mm -hmm. and I have a system of work, me, I can work tirelessly 24-7 for as long as I know it's something that I deserve because I'll get that salary because I've worked for it. Mm -hmm. I will pay my taxes and I love this country enough to be in the streets knowing that I could die in the front line. But 100%, I want to see where my money is going. I want to know if I've paid my taxes and there needs to be a construction of a road in my constituency that I can go back and tell my MP this road deserves to be made because I have paid my dues. And you see, 
even Jesus himself told us, give, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And Caesar back then used to do his job. That's why those kingdoms were powerful. This Caesar is not giving us, you know, a product of where our money is going from. And they're forgetting we are also the generation of people who are well studied because Kibaki gave us free education mm -hmm. and in social studies we read the process of bill making fully in history mm -hmm. and in and and you see by the time you we are coming to campuses we are such intellects we are in intelligent generations of people who are articulate because we had great debaters contest all across our ears who are very very well um, in tune with their talents because we had music festivals and we went and we sang about corruption and we did so many poems and narratives were acted concerning such things and set books were set for us like Akina Kigogo, Akina Kinini, Mr. Ikimea, Tumbo Lisiloshiba which all retaliated what corruption is in a country and how to change and you see in all those books for example if I remember Tunu I think this should be is, is it Kigogo mm -hmm. where at the end of every book it's like there was a collective action just yeah. by young people and things change mm -hmm. Well, we read that and we studied Nini Caucasian Chok Sakol. Why are they looking as if they're all shocked? Mm -hmm. They don't know that we, we, we don't need a leader. We don't. Mm -hmm. All of us are setting the same goals mm -hmm. that we want a Kenya that we deserve. Mm -hmm. We are better. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we deserve a better, a better country. And if you notice, other countries are saying they can't even do what Kenya has done. Because it takes a lot of work to build momentum. You cannot even pay all those young people to come. Yeah. You can't do logistics for that number. That quotes to show you that for the first time they're having a generation where you will get proper feedback. Mm -hmm. And I think I can take even this opportunity to tell people, the government is mandated to announce public participation. It's always in the Gazette. Yeah. Every single young person should show up because it's usually per county. Mm -hmm. All of us should be storming those public participations because mm -hmm. they give different people, you know, opportunities to speak. Mm -hmm. Let us participate. I think I've been telling people to endeni, to endeni, to endeni. They're supposed to do one uh, on 8th July for, to, to give feedback on the fuel levy. Mm -hmm. Kenyans need to show up. Mm -hmm. Heri Kujai. Heri kujai wa shindo kupeana mic. But tukaitukijua, even if they won't listen to all of us, because you know they're acting as if they're so android, they're very manual. We can all do a documentation that day. Some of us can carry laptops. Yeah. We can sit down in groups and tell people, can you give us perspectives? Mm -hmm. We can write them down. And if there are too many, we can, we can do a recording of everybody and tell AI, can you write down all the main points? And we can use that to do recommendations. And those recommendations can be presented to them. Yeah. Nobody wants their job. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have ideas, I don't know why they are so shying away from asking people to give them ideas. Mm -hmm. we, are well, we are well healed because this is also a generation that has gone through a lot of mental wellness and health. We can see gaslighting. Mm -hmm. We can see narcissism. We can see you being manipulative. Mm -hmm. But importantly, we have seen the good thing about our mental health. We are having people who can reflect on their own narcissism mm -hmm. and reflect on their own manipulation and also hold accountability towards themselves in terms of where am I participating in my own suffering? Mm -hmm. And we as Gen Z realize the part where I'm, be I'm supporting my own suffering is being quiet when this corruption is happening. And so when people take accountability to show up mm -hmm. against these things, it's only fair for them to sober up and use this as an opportunity to make Kenya the greatest country the continent has ever had. Mm -hmm. It is so possible. You have the smartest tech people, the smartest doctors, the smartest engineers, the smartest media personnel. You have great journalists. You have great everything. Why would you not feel the need to do better? Mm -hmm. And, and then again, a question becomes, why is it so hard for you guys to do the right thing? How is that a problem? How is it a problem for you to wake up and say, okay, let me do the right thing? When you always concentrate on yourself, I'm going to do the wrong thing every single day. It doesn't make sense. They have such an opportunity. And maybe, for example, if they don't know, by the way, you can make much more money when things are doing better. You can. Come on, All right. You can make so much money. Mm. Kenyans know how to build things. You can make so much money out of just ensuring that every Kenyan is comfortable enough mm. to build and come up with. And these kids and will come up with innovations you have never seen. Mm. Teachers will create curriculums you have never seen. Doctors will handle healthcare like you have never seen. Like just do the right thing and see Kenyans get to their full potential. It will do so much. Kama wameona tumeza kulipadi bills za wenye waliumia wenyewe. 
people raised millions in hours. What is so hard about them creating community systems that can allow people to support their own communities? Why can't we not deal with Kibra ourselves? Why do we have the biggest slum in the continent in, in, in Nairobi? Why can't we clean? Why can't we plant trees? Why can't they allow Kenya to be run efficiently? What is so hard? It's our taxes anyway. Like, if you don't have ideas, invite one inchi to share what they have there's nothing wrong with that one act ni kama ni know it all na hakuna shit wanajua invite one inchi that's what public participation is and it's okay for you to come and see i have no idea what to do with this can can i have help yeye ni kutengeneza committee ya old fellows who will never be able to innovate for the new age and that's why everything they're trying to put as solutions cannot work it's a different time it's not more his time where 90% of everybody did not go to school and you can just tell them jump and they jump. These ones you tell us jump, there's nobody who's going to ask you how high. You will leave. You will, you will be escorted out. But I don't see how difficult it is for them to do the right. It's so, inani, yani, nakachina samatu kai. Ama hawa say they are on drugs. Ama hote ni wazimu. It can't be normal. It can't really. Government can do better. Yeah. Mm. So um, you're saying that the problem is, yani young people do not have a problem with paying taxes. They yeah. just want to see that these taxes are yeah. working for me. You yeah. know, I have worked hard for this money. Let me let let it work for me now. Mm. It's just as simple as that. If my parents are paying, for example, me, let's say I'm not even 18. If my parents are paying taxes, then I'm expecting under the law the simple rights, fundamental rights are education food, shelter, and clothing. Do you think that is something people get in this country? No, they don't. Free education ended up, I think, halfway through Uhuru's time. If you remove education, you've removed the basic need of the country. You have bad, bad health care systems. These are populations that require health care. It's out of the roof. Uh, you, you, you have food security as an issue. It's a primary fundamental right. You don't have process. Your CS of agriculture is on drugs. Yani, there's nothing. The fundamental things are not working. But you want to remove taxes from helicopters being imported. You have prioritized increasing salaries for MPs and nani kuchokoza watu. You cannot be increasing salaries right now when the same same MPs we are trying to recall them and your cabinet secretaries are incompetent. And they, the CSs politicize everything, including CS health. You cannot politicize everything that you see in the world. Mm -hmm. Things need to be sober. And then even if you look at the CSs in the positions that they are holding, they don't even know what to do. They don't even know what they are. They don't know what they are doing. And that's why the country is not making money because you're having those fellas. You cannot be telling me that there's a CS who has been caught with 200 million somewhere in Dubai, and the president had to intervene for what? We're dealing with crooks, crooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think. If they can just allow us as young people to be and exist because we love this country, man. We, we go to our national parks and take pictures and expose this country. We participate in the most beautiful of things across the country. Right now as we are speaking, there's a world record that has been broken by the cyclists. We have won the, the Tour de France. Mm -hmm the first Kenyan and the first African to ever win that. There's so much potential in young people. I don't know why they can't see that. I don't know what's so difficult. But seeing the young people as a threat because, you know, they are, they are treason as criminals. <laughs> they don't have a leader. I don't know who is funding them. Faceless, leaderless. That is a new. And, it's you know, it's very interesting. And that's why I love the fact that all of us have our mental health in order. Mm -hmm. uh, or rather, we are walking towards that journey of healing. You can tell our peace triggers their violence, mm -hmm. our innovation triggers their arrogance, our truth triggers their lies, everything about us triggers the worst out of them because it exposes the fact that they have never associated with the good side of life. Mm -hmm. And you see all those dirty lingering things that they keep attaching themselves to, the corruption, the stealing, the nepotism. This this government is the most nepotic I have ever seen. The most nepotic. So you find you're making politics even in things that do not have any association. And the nepotism is still continuing even in the midst of chaos. Even in the midst of chaos. I can't even... Yani, by the way, he has won. Eh? He has the title of world's most narcissistic president we have ever had. I can't believe he can convince himself every day this is the right way to go. Like, okay, guys, we are doing the correct... No, something has to be wrong. Something has to be potentially wrong. So should he step out of power and we find another president or what should happen? What do the young people want? First of all, he needs to dissolve that cabinet. 
none of those cabinet secretaries are helping him, genuinely speaking. And nobody is telling him to appoint young people, by the way. I can't, I can't tell you at he, as a buddy, at he, I'm like, yeah, when I grow up, I want to be in government. No, <laughs> not at all. Uh -huh. So nobody wants your job, meaning the only thing you're being actually advised is to fix up your house. Yes. Fix it up. Mm -hmm. He needs to dissolve that cabinet. Mm -hmm. He needs to. Secondly, those salaries, instead of increasing, mm -hmm. all of them need to be reduced, starting with his. Mm -hmm. And and if you can, if you can just try it, the, the less of the salary, you will see a lot of proper politicians actually stepping up. All these fellas will go because, number one, they have made uh, being leaders in this country a whole business. In fact, it's family businesses for some of them. Reduce all those salaries, cut out all the unconstitutional offices from the CSS to the office of the first lady to the office of the deputy to the office of the spouse of the spouse of the, of the prime. What is this? Even the prime cabinet, what is that? All of these things are very unconstitutional. All of these things do not deserve to be happened. There are cops here. <laughs> uh, what else do I think should change? He should prioritize all the money that is going on to yeah, friends. education. It's okay. All the money that we have, all, all the money that, is, that we're supposed to be making should prioritize education, healthcare, and agriculture. People need to eat and eat securely and eat correct food because, again, I hear fertilizer was also really, really bad. It was off. Apart from that, people also need to go to school and study. People also need to go to hospital and get proper facilities. Those three, honestly speaking, is the only thing you should be focusing on. Mambo ya barabara jenga because when people actually do very well in agriculture and food is circulating and money is flowing, we will have enough taxes to be able to build these roads. And most of them, Atta, can we just go back to actually having the army build these things? We have bridges and things that we used our own labor. We have NYS now more than ever. Why can't we capitalize on what we have and stop looking for any excuse to get money outside? He needs to fix things inside. Before we even borrow, I think he, he also needs to stop traveling. Aye, when you don't have any, any, any secretaries, if you're not flying, apparently you are, you're lying. He needs to pick a struggle. Honestly speaking, he can nominate. Speaking of borrowing, there, you know, he talked about um, he needed to borrow another one trillion, you know, but now thanks to, you know, us rejecting the finance yeah. bill. You need one trillion to run government. Half of it is usually for salaries and any other gimmicks called corruption. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine us needing to borrow, to borrow one, not billion, trillion. <laughs> for what? My God. Isn't this the same, same country where we are being told two billion is always lost every single day? Isn't this the same, same country where we have almost every single offshore work that happens in Mombasa? Isn't it the same, same country that is a transit for the entire continent? Isn't this the same, same country with the, with the biggest airline? Isn't this the same, same country with the biggest tech offices because all the techpreneurs are here? It does not make sense why we'll require. <laughs> Save the money. How we require one trillion to get things functioning. Yani, and a sound true nikamaki haji levi. Yeah, it's very scary. Now, by the way, I don't think he understands that people stopped being scared because people lost everything. We are still the same, same kids who were misplaced during post-election violence. We're the same, same kids who had COVID trauma. We're the same, same kids who have seen during Uhuru's regime people being murdered. We're the same, same regime who saw Jacob Duma, Nini, people like Jacob Duma, people like Msando being killed because of elections. We're the same, same people who have seen the worst of politics and we have seen several presidents do a lot of bullshit. Okay, for the first time, can he just do the right thing? Imagine this is the second year. Now, and we are exhausted. Yes. You've said that, um, like, Gen Z's buddies are attacking Kukua leaders. Mm. Society wana tika kuingia kwa politics. But tumeona some several people here and what there, young okay? people mm. talking about forming parties, nini nini. Uh, 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 uh. That's the right way to go. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me share perspective. Kawira Mangaza, for example, won the Meru seat as an independent. Mm. Who did she need? What political party mm. did she require? No one. And political parties require you to form that association, right? And that coordination of what are your values, what are your missions, mm -hmm. what exactly does the political star party stand for. And that has put a lot of political parties in a box. Mm -hmm. Same, same thing, the way we, we now see ODM is for Nyanza. Yeah. And then we saw uh, Jubilee is for, is for uh, 
nini gema region for example we have absolutely no reason right now to form a political party the next time you will need a political party is when absolutely never because we can just identify a candidate and go ahead and vote they want us to sound and focus on something that they are used to because these are also the same people who are not very used to change i think we can be able to formulate working groups that people can work on doctors can give their perspective of what change looks like in that sector and what they feel recommendations would work out let them send it to the CS. people who are in the spaces for taxes and finance or whatever can still do a working group there is absolutely enough room for all of us to win there is a room the ocean is filled with fish we can strategically come up with solutions to things that we feel we want to change and give the correct people who we act they were actually voted for to do their freaking damn job I don't think it's the time for us to tell ourselves, let's put ourselves in a box, let's form associations, let's form structures, we look very lost. And also I feel like there's a very big difference between Gen Z's wanting our own type of leadership and millennials wanting to be identified because that's also a group of generational people who are so good at social validation and I have nothing against them. But some millennials really like that social validation you want to be known for something you want to be seen yani you want to identify you're so used to you're so traumatized babe like you, you just want to be somewhere where your ego has been suit and well coated it doesn't work for us as we really don't care whether i look bad whether i look good i can come in town with pajamas we don't want to be put and confined in a box leadership linear leadership Teach female politician come like out they came out towards yes. there it's like they wait until this crisis is knocked at their door so that they can find relevance. When the floods came in, me, I saw helipads taking people out of the protest that day when people invaded parliament. But when people had floods, there was absolutely no resource to assist people to get out of, out of flooded areas. And people died. You see, for me, their priorities are lost. How do you have people in emergency response offices who have done surgery? I have no problem with people doing criminology, but for example, how are you having a criminologist in an emergency response office? What are they supposed to do? Then it is, it is, a, it is just a mess. We have too many offices that take up a lot of money that should have been utilized in proper offices. The country is going to save 1.2 billion from the two offices of the first, apparently the, the first lady and the what and the. Deputy, first lady, Ama, what do we call her? Because we were giving them 500 and 600 million for what? Planting trees and praying. And she has removed Linda Mama. And, oh, and fighting drugs. So what is Nakada doing? <laughs> Yanni, you see how narcissistic this is? You can't tell me they don't know. They do. They do. 48 laws of power have taught us very well. They're also forgetting we're also the group of people who have been taught, like people like Jordan Peterson. We have read Plato and Socrates. Mm -hmm. We have been able to also see, you know, what, what power looks like and what gimmicks they can play around it. We have studied democracy. We have studied constitutional uh, data. And we're looking at all these things and we're like, first of all, even this role play they are doing over here. Mm -hmm where you create a problem and you sort of synthesize a solution to look as if you're solving something that you blockade the entire situation that people are telling you we have read these things we know them and that's why nobody is so buying you, you can actually the yeah, gen z's can actually see these yeah. things they can see through the lies they're so clear like you're raising salaries right now even you know it's a damn fucking joke so why would you necessarily sit yourself down? The C CRC does not have money to pay doctors, it does not have money to pay teachers, but it has enough money to, incre to increase salaries. It looks like a play. We have seen it before. We have seen how it has ended with other ninis, with other leaders. We know how it works. And so we're waiting for them to finish their role play so that we remind them that we are still on course. Mm -hmm. Because then they think, you know, yumba yumba ring, propaganda, it's this also a very propagandistic government. There's a lot of propaganda, propaganda. We're waiting for them to finish. Once they're done, the propaganda will remind them, yeah, we are still on course. Mm -hmm. We're still saying the same thing. Nobody's flinched, nobody's moving. And if they can only understand that, it should be easier for them. Mm -hmm. So um, as we wind up, like, if they don't if they're not accountable what will the young people do will they go back to the streets and protest again you know we we want to we, we want you people to be accountable make sure that the taxes are working for us make sure that you assign money correctly and make sure that you're using money correctly what what, what will the young people do if these leaders do not act correct okay i have a sneeze coming <laughs> so let me share something that i think would also be important as i answer that we need to stop celebrating people for doing their job. 
when MPs give out these bursaries, it is their job. It's not the time to say we're MP in Missouri, that's their job. When we are calling upon governors and senators to actually look at county work seriously and empower county officials to do their job and trickle down government systems, and they do it, it is their job. When the president uh, is told to recall the finance bill and he withdraws it, and there's nothing to celebrate here, it is your job. Mm -hmm. So even as we're looking at what is the way forward, what what happens if we will go back to the streets we are unemployed we are idle we'll just go. come back with the ubers yeah we'll come back with ubers and they know they need to know our parents support these missions the only thing they do is pray for us and hold their hearts when you're outside there they're like oh, i hope they don't kill my child but not only i think they need to understand that this thing is very autonomous people will do whatever they want depending on who they are because nobody's leading these things like today i'm hearing narok is on protest nairobi is not on protest mm -hmm. so this thing does not have any motion it's motionless it's leaderless but it's not faceless it's the young people that you're dealing with they should stop saying that and the structure is that yes it's the night it's the young people who are who are the structure mm -hmm. so that whole thing of saying that oh we want an x space first of all them being the ones who dictate to us what we're supposed to discuss is very off-putting. They should wait to be pangwad, sisi who are to pangwingwi. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. But if, if I don't see accountability personally for me, I think definitely I'll go back to the streets. I can't go back and I'll just go back and protest against it. Mm -hmm. Because really it's not about the person. It is the office and the work that it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage... Not so people it doesn't to matter who is there, whether it's Ruto, President whether Ruto, it's whether Ruto, it's anyone. Seveni, his uh -huh. friend, whoever it is, even if they bring us a new president tomorrow and he does the same, same thing, we will call you out. They need to understand, we call ourselves out. So we will call you out because that is what we are used to. We are used to being accountable to ourselves because we don't want a repeat of what we have seen. Mm -hmm. So they need to change, because otherwise us, we are not giving up. I don't think there's anybody giving up from this fight, it, and we don't have to really, because nobody's causing harm to them. But they were kona bahati sana. Atuna yoro hoya, euros, kamazao, atinota kuwana, we are tribalistic, we are classist. It's very, this is a very intellectual war. And of course, if you're not an intellect, no wonder you're, you know, probably having a problem with Gen Z. But in an intellectual war, when you see you're not on a knowledge capacity to be able to assist in, in, in the protest intellectually, for us as Gen Z, what we did, we empowered and, uh, and nini, and affirmed even the small efforts that happened. So at Munyaku Kuja Barabara, that small tweet, you are being affirmed, yeah? So those small, small efforts are exactly what did a lot of groundbreaking work. And then you cannot divide the people who are united in love. People love each other. This Gen Z thing comes from a lot of love. We were singing and dancing. There's a lot of art and music, paintings. There's a lot of artistry and a lot of love and life out of this thing. Mm -hmm. So for us, I think even if they don't change, we will still be on course. Mm -hmm. And digital activism is very much at play right now. So even if we're not on the streets, we will be able to destabilize mm -hmm. um, the country, even digitally, because the whole point is that we want you to do your job. It's so, I mean, it's so simple in Anishtua. It's so simple. Like, just do your job. Just do your job and hold yourself accountable. Yeah. Thank you so much for your remarks. I think we need to have you again to talk more <laughs> about this. Right. Yeah, so maybe you can tell people where they can find you. Yeah, socials. Oh, my. In case there's a course that you need, that they need you in, yeah. they can talk to you. Okay. So I think I will prioritize to share my organization other than my individual oh. self. Um, Amali organization works around all these things. We have a lot of young experts doing a lot of tremendous work. So I think uh, myself, really this is not the time to fame, to, you know, to gather out around in fame. It's not, there's nothing to celebrate here. There is nothing to be famous about. I think collectively if, if people can focus on the, on the motion, if we can stay on course, and ensure that we stand on business in terms of ensuring that the country deserves better and gets better. That's all by me. A Mali organization is the same in all platforms. Um, in case people want to, let's say, participate in the work, it's very much volunteer-like. You can come in, support where you can. Myself, I always share my thoughts on TikTok. I think that's where I really have a nice community built up. This it's never about me or spend it. I have so much social anxiety. I'll get scared, you know. But in 
I think it's Balozi Zaha everywhere. We, I speak politics a lot. I also have an intersectional thought yani in terms of things are never one way. So if it's health, we look at health and the economy, health and the environment. If it's people, it's just an intersectional view. Yeah, and when you meet me, you can say hi, but I'm not a celebrity. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my organization. Gen Z buddies, they don't want to, you know. Not, it, it, it's also very ghetto. Yeah. The celebrity nini life here. It's very ghetto. Yeah. It's very. <sighs> I've seen a lot of celebrities do a very good job mm -hmm. and kudos to them because the digital work is also very good mm -hmm. but I, it doesn't have that. There's, I usually don't see the emotion out of it mm -hmm. and I usually don't think it's something I would do. Mm -hmm. But mwah, happy for them. Me, I'm okay wherever I'm at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me, I'm just okay. okay. Thank you, Zaha, so much for your time. Thank Please you so come again and again and again. Yes, yeah, so guys, you've heard from Zaha. You can follow her. You can listen to her on TikTok and you can follow her organization as well. So keep it KOM for more. Bye-bye.